For 70 years, every general on Earth has probably slept with the same nightmare. A missile can leave a silo in North Dakota, re-enter over Beijing 12,000 miles away, and no one can stop it. Not intercept it, not even see it in time, just watch the flash. It's a terrifying thought, isn't it? Well, that nightmare just changed owners. Last month, China quietly booted up a prototype network that can track a thousand separate launches, from any ocean, any continent, in under three seconds. Washington's fabled Golden Dome? Still a PowerPoint presentation, a glossy concept in a binder somewhere. Beijing's version? It's already flickering to life over your head while we speak. Stick around, because the math behind this shield is as wild as the politics it detonates. We're talking about a seismic shift in global power, and it's happening right now. For decades, global stability, in a terrifying way, rested on a concept called MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. It worked because nobody, and I mean nobody, could escape retaliation after launching a nuclear strike. The idea was simple. If you hit me, I hit you back, and we both end up in a smoking crater. No winners, only losers. That chilling certainty kept the peace, or at least a very uneasy truce. But then came hypersonic glide vehicles, and they absolutely trashed that comfort. These aren't your grandpa's ballistic missiles. They fly low, they maneuver mid-course like a fighter jet, and they hit 20 times the speed of sound. Imagine something moving so fast it can cross continents in minutes, dodging and weaving, making it practically impossible to predict its final target. It's like trying to swat a fly that's moving at Mach 20. The US Missile Defense Agency has poured $40 billion, yes, $40 billion, into a sprawling, complex defense architecture. They've got massive radars in Alaska, advanced ships patrolling the Pacific, and a thousand-page study, probably gathering dust, called the Golden Dome. The bottom line? On a really good day, with a fair wind and a following sea, this system might stop a handful of North Korean rockets. Maybe, against 500 Chinese hypersonic warheads, each possibly mixed with decoys and flying erratic patterns? Zero chance, absolutely none. The Pentagon admits it in hushed tones, Senate hearings echo the sentiment. The dream of an impenetrable shield for America? It remains just that. A dream, confined to paper and digital slides. It's a monument to an older generation of threats, utterly outmatched by the new reality. Beijing's answer, its audacious counter-move, is nicknamed Tian Wang, Mandarin for Heavenly Net. And let me tell you, it's not just another radar dish. It's not even a collection of radars. Think of it more as a living, breathing data organism. This isn't your traditional, single point of failure system. Instead, it's a vast, distributed network that pulls in information from every conceivable corner. We're talking about cutting-edge satellites orbiting above, sleep destroyers patrolling the seas, and even surprisingly cheap, civilian marine ice buoys, the kind that track commercial shipping, all repurposed for a new, far more critical mission. Then there are the ground-based telescopes, some of them perhaps even disguised as innocuous TikTok-like observation posts, all piping raw imagery and data into a single, cohesive cloud. And the magic that makes all this disparate data flow? It's called Quick, Quick UDP Internet Connection. This isn't some obscure military-grade protocol. It's the very same, open-source technology Google uses to give you stutter-free YouTube videos, even when your internet connection is struggling. It's designed to keep packets flowing, to maintain that crucial data stream, even when lines are jammed or partially severed. On top of this robust communication backbone sits a distributed early warning big data platform. This beast digests an astounding one terabyte of information every four seconds. To put that in perspective, that's enough data to follow every single stage of a missile's flight, every decoy it deploys, every sudden dog leg turn a warhead makes as it navigates the atmosphere. The sheer volume and speed of processing are mind-boggling. But it doesn't stop there. This torrent of information then feeds an AI swarm, a collective intelligence that learns missile signatures the way Gmail learns to spot spam. It's constantly analyzing, constantly refining its understanding of what a real threat looks like versus a decoy or atmospheric interference. The result? A living, 
planet-wide missile tracker that updates in real time. It's not just seeing, it's understanding, predicting, and adapting. It's a system designed to evolve and learn, making it exponentially more effective with every new piece of data it processes. Imagine trying to sneak into a nightclub, but the bouncer, from across the street, can not only see you but can taste the alcohol on your breath. That's the kind of hyper-awareness TN1 is aiming for. Its real trick, the secret sauce, is correlation. It's about taking fragmented, often ambiguous pieces of data and weaving them into an undeniable truth. A rusting fishing boat, perhaps in the South China Sea, picks up a faint heat blur from a launch. Seconds later, a satellite passing overhead catches the same tell-tale plume. Then, an over-the-horizon radar, perhaps deep in Inner Mongolia, measures the ionospheric scatter caused by the missile's exhaust. Alone, each of these sensors provides only a grainy, incomplete picture. The fishing boat's heat sensor might just be picking up a passing freighter's engine. The satellite's view could be obscured by clouds. The radar's data might be confused by natural atmospheric phenomena. But fused together, these disparate data points create something far more powerful, a unique fingerprint, specific to every rocket motor ever built. It's like assembling a puzzle where each piece, by itself, is meaningless, but together, they form a clear, undeniable image. The platform currently holds an astonishing 2.3 million such fingerprints. That's enough data to tell an American Minuteman from a Russian Topol from a North Korean Wausau in under 0.2 seconds. Think about that for a moment. Less than a quarter of a second to identify the specific type of missile, its origin, and its likely trajectory. Analysts, grappling with this unprecedented capability, have coined a phrase for it. Physically scattered but logically connected. It sounds like corporate speak, sure, but what it really means is this. They've effectively glued the entire planet together with software. Every sensor, no matter how remote or seemingly insignificant, becomes a node in a vast, intelligent network, all contributing to a single, unified picture of global missile activity. It's a distributed brain, constantly observing, constantly learning, constantly identifying. If TN1 works as advertised, and early indications suggest it does, then the entire Cold War calculus, the delicate balance of terror that has governed international relations for decades, simply collapses. Deterrence used to rest on a simple, brutal premise, we can hit you back. It was a promise of mutual annihilation, a terrifying equilibrium. But a functional, planet-wide missile shield fundamentally alters that. It turns the equation on its head, shifting it from we can hit you back to we can hit you first and catch what's left. That's a game-changer of epic proportions. Consider a hypothetical scenario. Beijing could, in theory, launch a conventional strike on a US base, say, Guam. As Washington weighs its options, considering the unthinkable nuclear retaliation, Beijing could then confidently destroy the inbound volley of any retaliatory strike mid-course. The ability to neutralize a counterattack before it even reaches its target provides an unprecedented strategic advantage. Escalate? Sure, why not? Because escalation no longer guarantees mutual suicide. It means one side, the one with the shield, might walk away relatively unscathed. This isn't just theoretical speculation. That strategic tilt, this profound shift in the balance of power, is precisely why every defense white paper published since 2022 lists comprehensive missile defense as the single fastest way to overturn the Pacific balance without firing a single shot. It's not about winning a war, it's about making your adversary's war unthinkable, making their retaliation impossible. It fundamentally redefines what constitutes a credible threat and what constitutes effective deterrence. The power dynamics of the 21st century are being rewritten, not with new weapons, but with new defenses. The news of TN1, even as a prototype, sent shockwaves through Washington. Congress, predictably, reacted by quietly reviving the Golden Dome study just two weeks after TN1 made headlines. It's a classic move. When your rival unveils something groundbreaking, you dust off your own shelved projects and declare renewed urgency. The 2024 Defense Authorization Bill, a behemoth of spending, now bundles a hefty $12.7 billion into initiatives grandly titled, Next General Overhead Persistent Radar, and AI-Assisted Glide Phase Intercept. Translation? We're trying to copy the Chinese playbook, and fast. 
This means investing in small, agile satellites, setting up cheap, resilient data links, and leveraging machine learning for correlation. All elements that Tian Wang already employs. The challenge, however, is that while we're trying to replicate their core approach, we're also stapling on our own pet projects, like laser interceptors that are still very much stuck in the lab, years away from practical deployment. It's a bit like trying to build a new high-tech car while simultaneously insisting on using old, experimental jet engines. The timeline? Optimistically, maybe a prototype by 2033. Maybe. That's almost a decade from now, a glacial pace in the rapidly evolving world of defense technology. Meanwhile, the US Navy is reactivating two Cold War-era tracking ships, venerable vessels that saw service decades ago, because new hulls, designed for modern warfare, won't even float until 2028. This stark contrast highlights the significant gap. The advantage, in this critical domain, clearly goes to Beijing by at least half a decade, if not more. They've moved from concept to prototype, we're still trying to get our concepts off the drawing board and into the funding pipeline. Does a world where one power can shoot down the sun feel safer to you, or like the most dangerous imbalance since 1945? It's a heavy thought, isn't it? Drop your take in the comments below. The best argument, the most insightful perspective, gets pinned. Let's get a real conversation going about what this means for all of us. Alright, let's get a little bit technical, but I promise, it's worth it. Most people's eyes blaze over when engineers start raving about transport layers and network protocols. But when we talk about quick, it really, truly matters. Old school TCP, or transmission control protocol, which underpins most of the internet, is fantastic for things like email or browsing websites. If a packet of data gets lost, TCP simply resends it. Perfect for ensuring your cat video loads completely. But for tracking a Mach 15 dart heading towards your capital? Deadly. That resend delay, that moment of hesitation, is an eternity. Quick, on the other hand, is built for speed and resilience. It keeps the data stream alive, even if half the web is fried by something as catastrophic as a nuclear-generated EMP burst. It's designed to be connectionless, multiplexed, and incredibly efficient, minimizing latency and maximizing throughput, especially in challenging network environments. While Washington is still paying defense contractors billions to bolt 1980s-style TCP stacks onto billion-dollar satellites, a testament to legacy systems and bureaucratic inertia, Beijing is smartly piggybacking on Google's open-source code. They can update it, compile it, and launch it with an agility that our traditional defense procurement system simply can't match. Couple that with reinforcement learning models, which are a form of AI that learns by trial and error, getting better with each iteration. These models self-train on every new missile test video scraped from social media, every publicly available telemetry trace, every bit of open source intelligence. It's a continuous, real-time feedback loop. The shield isn't just static, it grows smarter, more accurate, and more robust every single day it stays online. Think of it like a global antivirus program, constantly updating its definitions, except the viruses it's hunting are hypersonic missiles. It's a dynamic defense, learning from every potential threat, whether real or simulated, and evolving its capabilities in ways we're only just beginning to comprehend. So, if China has a planet-wide shield, what's the next move? Don't expect an arms race in bigger, faster missiles. That's old news. What we're going to see is an arms race in sensor spam. It's a battle for perception, for information dominance. Imagine fleets of cheap CubeSats, tiny, shoebox-sized satellites, specifically designed to emit fake warhead signatures, creating a chaotic sky full of phantom threats. Think of aluminum clouds, intentionally deployed in the upper atmosphere, turning radar screens into disco balls of meaningless blips and sparkles. Then there's the cyber warfare angle. Malware specifically designed to whisper false coordinates to the AI, to subtly corrupt its data, making it see ghosts or ignore real threats. Tian Wang's next iteration will almost certainly carry micro-interceptors. These won't be massive, expensive rockets. Instead, picture tiny, agile drones, swarming through space, designed to ram incoming missile buses, the part of a missile that carries multiple warheads, mid-space. It's a cost-effective, highly distributed countermeasure. And how will America answer? 
with swarms of swarms. Our own fleets of interceptor drones, designed to overwhelm and confuse, to engage in dogfights in the vacuum of space. The cost curve here is critical. A single Patriot missile, a cornerstone of Western air defense, runs about $4 million. A TN-1 micro drone? 30,000. The math is brutal and clear, the drone wins. You can deploy hundreds, even thousands, of drones for the cost of a single traditional interceptor. By 2030, the sky above the Pacific could genuinely look like a high-speed ant colony, a dizzying ballet of automated systems. And here's a truly wild thought. Every civilian smartphone, with its increasingly sophisticated sensors and processing power, could potentially double as a backup sensor, contributing to a distributed global awareness network. Wild? Yes. Inevitable? Also yes. The future of warfare is going to be less about brute force and more about information, deception, and distributed intelligence. Let's be clear. TN1 isn't the Death Star. It's not some planet destroying superweapon. Instead, think of it as the ultimate bouncer. It's scanning your ID, checking your credentials, and assessing your intentions before you even reach the door of the club. For China, it offers immense prestige, the unparalleled achievement of leapfrogging the United States in arguably the most marquee military technology of the 21st century. It's a powerful statement of technological prowess and strategic foresight. For everyone else, however, it means something far more unsettling. The old terror of unstoppable missiles, the cold dread of a nuclear winter, is quietly being replaced by a new terror. A world where the first striker, the aggressor, might walk away unscathed. It's a world where one nation possesses a disproportionate ability to defend itself, fundamentally altering the risk-reward calculation of international conflict. The prototype is online, the code is learning, and the planet just became a chessboard with one side able to castle out of checkmate. This isn't just about missile defense, it's about redefining the rules of engagement, the very nature of deterrence, and the future of global power. So here we sit. A Chinese shield stretching from pole to pole, a formidable reality. An American shield, the fabled Golden Dome, still largely stuck in slideshows and conceptual drawings. And ahead of us? A decade, probably more, of sleepless engineering nights, of frantic innovation, of a technological arms race unlike anything we've seen. Has this breakthrough, this incredible advancement, made nuclear war unthinkable again, restoring a semblance of stability through a new form of deterrence? Or has it merely made it thinkable only for Beijing, granting them a unique and terrifying advantage? Let me know what you think below, in the comments. And if you want the real technical deep dive on Quick versus TCP in orbit, the nitty gritty of how this all actually works, then smash that subscribe button. We've got more videos coming, and trust me, you won't want to miss them.